Hi guys. Thanks for coming. Ding 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 ding. Hi. We have a welcome song prepared. <laughs> welcome to my panel, my panel, my panel. Welcome to my panel. My name is Karen. There we go. Nice. <laughs> that was excellent. Thank okay, you. everyone do that. No, <laughs> yeah, I'll do that and break my arm. Yeah, I, I couldn't do that at all. I would have fallen. I'm very klutzy. I would have. Yeah. Do it sitting down. Um, hi. Hi. I'm Tara Sands, and I'll tell you like who I am because I know I got left out of the program by accident. So some people are like, who are you? Um, so I'm a voice actress, uh, and I got my start in the original dub of Pokemon about 20 years ago. Uh, same age as NDK, actually. Pokemon NDK, 20 years old. Um, so in Pokemon I played about 50 different roles over the seven or eight years I was there. Uh, Bulbasaur is really all you care about though, I understand. Or Richie. Richie. People care about Richie, but usually it's Bulbasaur that gets the love. Uh, so during that time I also worked on Yu-Gi-Oh! and Shaman King, Fighting Foodons, Kirby, all those four kids shows back in the day. Uh, which was, it was great. We got to kind of just go from studio to studio and do a lot of make funny voices. Uh, original animation things I've done, uh, uh, I Spy, uh, Generator Rex, some Scooby-Doo stuff, things like that, video games. Uh, recently, uh, Digimon Adventure Tribe, which will be out uh, in September, September 15th, actually. Uh, and the new uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! movie, Dark Side of Dimensions, will be out TBA. So that's basically why I was asked to come here. And why are you here? To no, see you, obviously. Thank you. Um, so that's the nutshell. And I'm, at any time you guys want to ask questions, it's a small group. You don't have to get up and use the microphone if you don't want to. I'm um, happy to answer. Yes, sir, question. So what's the process of coming up with the voices for each Pokemon? Do they like play the cry and they have to like, okay, well that's something I want to do, or do they just like go for it? Well, I'll tell you how I, <coughs> Bulbasaur specifically, and I think this was the process with most of them. I played about nine or ten different Pokemon. We would go off the Japanese originally, that we'd hear. So, so my first day of working on Pokemon, they said, hey, since you're here, can, can you maybe do the voice for the, that little blue guy over there? And I said, okay, well, what does he sound like? And I, they played me something that said, dan, dan, dan. They're like, do that, but say Bulbasaur. <laughs> That's really what happened. So, you know, you figure out what the mood is, but it, the tricky thing really was over the years is that sometimes the amount of syllables in the Japanese name didn't match up with the amount of syllables in the American name. So, that's why certain times Bulbasaur says soar, soar, or bulba, bulba, because it was Don A, Don A. If we were lucky and he said Don A, Don, then we could say Bulbasaur. <laughs> Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it really, we were very dependent on, on the lip flap and the Japanese, and then it was really became all about just capturing the emotion of it. And to, I always say that acting with one word is the best training you can possibly get. Because if you can convey a range of emotions saying Clefairy or whatever it was, oddish, odd if he was sad, you know, then all when, when I got the luxury of having words, my job became so much easier. I was like, I get to say words. This acting is so much. So I think it was the, ab I mean, I, I had a background in theater and acting training from school, but for voiceover training at least, that was, I couldn't have asked for a better school. Um, because if you can work within those constraints, I feel like all of a sudden, when you get out of that box, everything's easy. But that, does that answer your question? So yes. that's, and I, I believe that's really, most of the sounds of the Pokemon creatures are pretty similar in tone to the original. Um, we didn't have a ton of flexibility in that area, just in the, um, in the way we said it and how we broke up the name and the emotion. Yes? Excluding Bulbasaur, what's your favorite Pokemon? Oh, that's so mean to do to the rest of them. <laughs> Sorry. I'll say vocally. The vocally, the two that I love to do because they didn't hurt my voice at all. Um, Daddy Ursa, Ursa, Daddy Ursa. So cute. Um, and Oddish, Odd, Odd, Oddish. Because that was just sat in a really comfortable place and I just found that little radish to be so adorable. <laughs> so underrated. Right? I mean, it has Blossom, and Blossom's adorable. I didn't get to do Blossom. 
That's a shame. She yeah, really, I know. She really I, yeah, all the line. I should have been on that. Um, yeah, some of them had great. I love it. Uh, Rachel Lillis did a lot of great Pokemon voices of the of the people and the Pokemon. So, yes. No, he said. Uh, 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 go ahead. Oh, no. What did you say? I, what I said was you should have been able to do the entire line of like Onish. It's like Onish, uh, Blue, Violet, Blue. 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 I see. You know, it, honestly, it wasn't like, we never took it personally, because a lot of times it's just like who happened to be there that day, and if they could do it, they ha it was, we were, you know, we were always on deadlines. I mean, that's really honestly how I got the part of Bulbasaur. I, I was there doing another role, and they're like, okay, you're here. Let's try all these things while you're here. Um, and that's why as an actor, I mean, I tell anyone who wants, you just gotta be ready for anything. You say yes if it's within reason, <laughs> if it's something you're comfortable with. And luckily, I was taught to just say, "Sure, I can do that." Um, now I'm, I'm like, with when it comes to things like accents and certain things, I'm pretty clear about what I can and can't do. But vocally, I'm like, "All right, let's just try it. If it sounds terrible, you won't use it, and I'll leave." What's the worst that can happen? I make a fool of myself. I do that anyway. So let's play. You have another question. I have a lot of questions. Oh, great. Right. <laughs> so, He's going to take over the year. Have a seat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. All right. So um, do you have an agent? And if you do, how do you go about getting one? Because I want to be a voice actor, too. So it's, it's tricky. I mean, my story is not as applicable nowadays. I started when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And it was an easier time. I lived in New York City, right outside it. So it was a different time. Um, I think it's a different world right now. I, I have an agent. They get me a lot of my work, but a lot of my work is me hustling and making connections and meeting people and like, you know, hopefully I'll get to work at Funimation one day in Dallas. I, my agent never would have made that happen. That happened because I'm here talking to people and I'm gonna follow up because I luckily enjoy the business side of this business. A lot of actors don't and you have to constantly Remind them, like, you are so talented, but if you don't get a little business savvy, you're never going to work. So, in terms of agents, I, I don't know that it's a necessary, uh, it's not the most necessary part. The most necessary part is getting great training and meeting the right people and being in the right place and being a hustler. I mean, it, you have to love this. And I love it. I love going into the booth. Every time I go into the booth, it's still fun. After all these years, and you have to really... Feel like I know people that didn't feel like that, and they, they laughed, and it's great they laughed because they could go find out what made them super happy. Um, but you guys have access to, to all sorts of things online, um, all sorts of auditions. You have access to college radio stations where you can volunteer and do commercials for them, and do you know intern at, at recording studios, and and you can have a home studio for a reasonable amount of money. That was not an option when I started. I learned. In college, we were kind of behind anyway, but I learned how to, I wanted to learn how to edit audio so that I would be a better performer and understand how to do, how to do it so that the engineer's job was easier. So that's a great thing to learn, but I learned how to do that with a razor blade. I'm not that old, but our school was really behind the times. Um, like they had the other stuff there, but I think they wanted us to understand the process. Like understand this is what it means to take out your breath so that the audience doesn't hear it and how fine that is and how really to perform vocally so that you make everyone else's job easier because that's when they bring you back. When you've made everyone's life easier. <laughs> if I complicate their lives, I'm not getting hired again. <laughs> if I'm difficult and want to make 87 million decisions and <sighs> breathing all over so they have to edit everything I do, you probably won't be invited to play again. And I just want to play, so yeah. I mean, guys, jump right in, or he's gonna just ask everything. <laughs> yeah, you have a question? Do you have any major influences, like somebody that's helped you out? I wish I had a real mentor mentor, but I, I will say this, the very first day I walked in to record Pokemon, Veronica Taylor was recording Ash that day. And we'd never met, and I, you know, again, it was, there was no, we didn't have IMDB, there was, you know, it was my first anime job, and I saw her working, and I had always done funny little boy voices, just as a joke, but it was the first time I saw a woman in the booth recording an amazing vocal as a, as a young male, and she was so good, and she was also recording Ash's mom, and so I saw this woman with the, I get like tingles, think. I love, I just love her so much, she's just incredibly talented, and a good friend and wonderful person, but I looked at her and I'm like, I want to do that, 
So, and luckily I liked her too because it sucks when you know your heroes are jerks. Um, oh. Which hasn't happened yet, but I always try to be realistic because you don't want to be disappointed. So for me, that seeing Veronica work was really eye-opening and made me realize that I could, because I was mostly, most of my work was commercials, you know, where I, literally my first voiceover job was for a wart commercial, a voiceover, and I said, ew, gross, a wart. So I didn't know there was this whole other world of stuff, and, and seeing her work was inspiring, absolutely inspiring. And then, of course, there's, you know, June Foray, and there's the, there's the names that you would know, but when you see someone in person do something like that, it, it sticks with you. Like, I have... A, I have a very specific picture in my head of what that, what I, how I saw her that day. She was pregnant, and I was like, "That pregnant girl is good." <laughs> um, and now her daughter's going to college. So that, it's crazy. Wow. Yeah. We know what pay for college. No, but we all have Pokemon, Power Rangers, etc. Growing up, what was your childhood like? What did you like? Smurfs. <laughs> yes. Smurfs. Yes. Did I you love Smurfs. I love Snorks. Snorks. Fraggle Rock. Yes. Love Fraggle Rock. Hogan's Heroes. Wasn't my, it wasn't my thing. It was a little bit of a boy show. But I liked it, but it wasn't my thing. I loved um, Great Space Coaster. I don't know if any okay. of you remember that. That was a great show. I mean, anything with Muppets, puppets, uh, I was a big fan of. Uh, but Smurfs, on, I mean, I, I, would, I would think, too, from a voiceover standpoint, I think there was some great work done on that show. And Smurfs, too. Um, anything Scooby Doo, I loved. Yes. Yes. Uh, and it holds up. I think that stuff really yeah, holds up. Mostly. Uh, mostly, yeah. I mean, no, there are a couple parts. Like yeah, they're driving around in this hippie band. That's a little. Hey. Oh, I love. That's what I love. Are you kidding? That's what I love. Yeah, but modern kids are like, what the heck is that? Good. Let them learn about yes. that. Yes. Let them learn about a hippie band. Yeah. No, I lo I love Scooby Doo. Um, and you know, the Disney movie, like Little Mermaid, obviously was the first one that I like would watch over and over and over again because I was a singer so for me I, I mean I there were once I would get a VHS copy of something I would just wear it watch it till it deteriorated <laughs> um Grease 2 I did that with That's I'm not proud you and Chris oh talk bad. to my parents though oh, I love that movie you um and Chris Pratt, we Breakfast Club I mean things like that that informed my sense of humor and then combined with Saved by the Bell and yeah. you know whatever I think that makes you, those shows, and that's why it's fun to meet you guys, because I do think, you, you do, kids watch a lot of television when their parents love them. And it does inform who you are. It does inform my sense of humor. And I get why you guys come to these things. If, you know, I want to see a big smirk walk around. You know, like that would touch my heart. So I understand and relate to, to why you guys come. And I've only been doing these conventions since last October. So I, I didn't. I didn't get to talk to everybody and, and hear the stories and about their Saturday mornings and what it made them think about and good things, bad things. So those are my those are the sh my shows. Fair point. I had a question. <laughs> well, and I was also going to say I, the schedule is a little bit wrong. Um, I don't have another signing today, unfortunately. I hoped I did. So at the end of this, we can stop early and I can sign whatever you guys have happily. Right. I know you could. I, I tried to get a Sunday signing, so. Yes. I remembered it. Um, so when you got the part of Richie, mm -hmm. did you and Veronica were like, oh, cool, they were like friendly rivals. Yeah, the trick was to sell. So Richie was um, Ash's rival for, there was an arc in the Pokemon. Um, the trick with that was to not sound too much like her. <laughs> because anytime you have a show of little kids around the same age, there's a limit to vocally to what we can all do. So, you know, once in a while, like we do a take and he'd be like, ah, too much, too much like Ash, too much like Ash, so we'd have to do it again. And which, look, again, when that's your hero, it, that's friggin' flattering, you know? And, and it was really fun. I mean, that, I thought that was probably the best story arc I had in that series and pretty lucky to, I don't know, I'll ever get an arc like that again in something. So as, as a character who comes in at least. And I thought, you know, I, I've been hearing people talk about Richie and how that friendship um, and that, and that, like, because it was combative, but it was a friendship, really, like, taught them a lot of lessons and things like that. I'm like, oh my god, I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I knew at the time, but I guess I didn't think about, I was just out of college when I did that, and I, yeah, and I, so as a nine-year-old or whatever watching that, it's a whole different thing. And I was saying the other day in our panel, like, 
that was the character I probably related to because like my best friend and I, we loved each other, but it was competitive. Like who got a better grade or who got, you know, who passed that or who got cooler shoes. So it is hard, it is, that's a hard, friend. friendships are hard at that age. So I loved that, so yes, and to, obviously to do that many scenes with Veronica, to me was really cool. Like I fangirled out to that, so <laughs> yeah, we still do. Yeah, you guys, you guys gotta give him a run for his money, yeah, yeah. You also said you like to sing? Mm -hmm. I used to sing, I haven't oh, been a singer sing? in a while, but oh. what? what? What would you like to sing? I'm a musical theater dork. I listen to Hamilton all day long. Sing happy birthday, NDK. No, I'm not going to sing. No. <laughs> I had to try. You had to try. Um, no, I, I, that, I, I, was, I always wanted to sing rock music, and I just am not built for that. So my, my voice was more suited towards musical theater. So I did a ton of, I lived in New York City uh -huh. for a long time. I did a lot of musicals, and I miss, I definitely miss that. But that's, I know, it's probably not fun for everybody, but that is like, like I was talking to someone, I was like, I was like, like what kind of con would we go to right now? Like if there was, I said, oh, a musical theater con. Like if Bernadette Peters was appearing, I'd wait in line for seven hours to watch her speak. So like you know, like as long as you're, I think fanatic about something, it gives you kind of more soul. You know, like we all have our own things that we're obsessed with. Like what? Star Wars. Star. Yeah. Like and I think when I meet someone who doesn't have a passion like that or isn't into something, I get nervous for them. <laughs> Like, ooh, love something, be into something. Do you see me why I'm rock music? music? <laughs> I would love to sing rock music, but I just can't, I'm not good at it. I, if I try karaoke, I just, it doesn't sound right coming out of my mouth. I just sang karaoke last night for the what first time. What did you time. sing? Black Sabbath. Mm. <laughs> see, that, that's my, my dream. I want to sing like Green Day all day, but I just don't sound good. It sounds ridiculous. Hmm. Was it good karaoke? Where'd you go for karaoke? Where did we go? Hogden. Street, yeah. Good to know you guys. Yeah. He's gonna be at karaoke tonight. Black Sabbath, nice. Yeah. My brother runs karaoke. The problem is we live in South Dakota. South so Dakota, yeah. Kind of far away. DJ Real said kids. nobody played us, and that was on the set list for four years. Nobody ever played. You're the us. first one. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I get shy at karaoke. Oh God, it's I was weird. so nervous. My, my stomach. I had butterflies. In you got nervous too? Yeah. Some people are just so brave at stuff like that. Like, I could sit here and talk all day and not get nervous, but mm -hmm. you put me up on us. Hey, that's weird. I don't kind know. Kind of helps when your mom's in the church choir for years and it makes you sing a lot. So you've been doing it a lot. Yeah. yeah. But I don't get nervous. If I have a script and lines and a character, mm -hmm. I'm fine because it's a character. But karaoke is you. You know, like, <laughs> that's you going out there. You don't have anything to hide behind. That's the that to me. The way the I'll tell you the thing that made me the scare, like the most nervous this whole weekend. Opening ceremonies, just going out and saying hello to everybody. Oh, yeah. And again, I've been doing this for years. I could get up on a stage in front of thousands of people, but that to me, not having the script, being me, I was like, I don't know what to say. So that's why I yelled out, Team Instinct. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Team um, Mystic. <laughs> I haven't. I haven't started. Dollar. Instinct. Instincts. I haven't started. Yeah. Yeah. Yet. <laughs> I just leveled up during this trip. That was my like main goal. I hit level 22, and now I feel like I have to put the phone away. <laughs> Are you guys all? Is there anyone who isn't playing? Yeah, hi. I hit level. You're 12. You're not playing. I'm not playing. You're the only one. Yeah, no, I'm not missing. Interesting. That, I'm trying to figure out what the heck is the difference between the teams. Well, okay, I'll tell you the difference because I didn't know either. Okay. So during a convention a few weeks ago, I finally was able to pick a team. So. And this is again what I like about Pokemon in general and about um, the game, which is why I'm. I'm and I, I, look, it would have been really easy to be like, this game is stupid, but the game is great. And the teams have different, I didn't know this, have like different mottos and different like traits. So I had one person from each team had one minute to state their case for their team and say why their team was the best and in which one fit the most with my personality. So that, that's, I love that. Like, I love that they came up with these traits for these teams and I think the detail that went into this game was just really smart and really good and that's why it caught on. If they had done like a half-assed job at it, it, of it, it wouldn't be as successful. They did it right. They did it well. There's glitches, of course, but that's everything. Yeah. And so at first I was like, oh my god, I'm playing this game. Now I'm like, I am playing this game. <laughs> <laughs> and I spent way too much money on it. <laughs> that's yeah. why you, if you have an Android phone, you should get the Google Opinion questionnaire, and they give you oh. like, uh, like 15 cents, like every question, but they like pelt you with questions like every once in a while. 
And so that's what I used to do. I mean, I'm not giving up my iPhone, but that's tempting. <laughs> well, that's right. Android's better. <coughs> tech people do say that. I'm not techie, so I don't, that's yeah. I, I'm like, no. I want things to be easy and intuitive. That's fair. You're I probably like smarter than me. Yeah. Any other questions? Oh, I thought you raised your hand. Yeah, yeah. Green. Oh, yes. Hi. Hi. Um, how did you get the role of Mokuba in Yu-Gi-Oh? I wish there was a really good story. I ju it was just an audition. Um, be I was already in that four kids family working, and it was just another one of the auditions I went on. And again, you know, there what we didn't have Crunchyroll and all these places to watch ahead. To, like, so for all I knew, Mokuba could have been in one episode and died. You know, it, it, right? Like, <laughs> thank God he didn't. Very dark. But yeah, we're very dark. Although the the original is much darker. There are like storylines where Mokuba killed her parents, and there's a lot of crazy stuff. That, but we just didn't have easy access to that. Now I can go and research what I'm doing. I can watch a, a subtitle copy of it. I can. So that was just another script I read in, in that day for an audition. And look, it turned into a role that I loved doing. And I, I don't know if you guys know this. Everyone who played that role kept moving. So a couple years in, I, I moved to Los Angeles. So then someone else took over. And then she moved to Los Angeles. So then someone else took over. So that's why when they invited me back to do the film, I was so happy because I, I had been away from that role for so long. But yeah, that was just another, you know, I think anyone who's looking to be an actor, you have to go on these auditions and just forget about them because otherwise you'll obsess and become a crazy person. So that just happened to be, you know, and then they're like, okay, your cast is Mokuba. And I was like, great, which one was that? But of course, then I learned, and it was awesome and amazing, and that cast is so good. And um, Dan Green, who doesn't play Yuki, doesn't do a lot of convention appearances, but two weeks ago, he, I, and Eric Stewart got to do our first convention together. And it was, uh, watching fans meet Dan Green was more fun than like anything I've ever done. Because he, he, he doesn't do them a lot, so he doesn't see the impact he had on them, and they love him so much. It just was really touching, and so yeah, so working in a cast like that, and especially if you were one of the, if, if you don't record your lines first, you can hear everyone else. So when, you, when you're the first one to work on an episode, it's kind of boring, because you're just filling in the blanks and hoping that what, what you say and how you say it is gonna fit in, but if I got to come in at the end, I got to hear all their performances which made my job easier, made it more fun, and they were all great. So that's, so I wish the audition story was better, but I could make something up. <laughs> <laughs> there was a casting couch. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, there's nothing, nothing good like that. Why'd you say to the other people on the casting couch? What? Why'd you say to the other people on the casting couch that they leave? What did I say to them? I, uh, I thought- She walked in and went, Team Instinct! Yeah, you went, Team Instinct dirty, and then I was like, no, uh, I should watch my mouth. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so that's, that's, that whole, that's it. That was a brown starring. You had a question. Uh, yeah, was there ever a role that you wanted to do, but going because the character who, who was taken or they, or they thought your voice wasn't suited for it? All the time. I read auditions every day and I think, oh my god, I want to play this role so badly. Um, it just, you know, sometimes it just doesn't, you, the, the, the truth is I never really find out why. I never get, I never really get a reason. Sometimes it's because someone's voice was more, more suited for it. Sometimes they gave the role to someone's sister. Sometimes they, you know, it could be any number of reasons. Um, that's why you can't get too attached to auditions. Um, and why I was really lucky back then that they didn't pigeonhole me. Um, they let me play such a, you know, a, I'm very lucky uh, that I got to be an old woman one day and a young boy the next day and then a teenage girl the next day, like Anna and Shaman King. That was, to me, that was the closest to my own voice and so that was really fun. Um, but I, I read for things all the time. Or, or the, what's worse is when I see something, I'm like, why didn't I read for that? So good. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything specific, but not. I mean, I remember when they were like recasting all the Disney princess voices, and I wrote on that, I'm like, I nailed that. And then, you know, you never hear anything. <laughs> you know, so like, three years goes by, and I'm like, okay, I probably didn't get that job. <laughs> um, but yeah, it happens constantly. 
it's a really compelling, or, or I audition and then like, you know, Scarlett Johansson does the part. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, all right, well, I probably didn't have a chance then. If she's cool with doing that, then I'm, yeah, I probably didn't need to read that. <laughs> I could have read that in like Swahili and it wouldn't have mattered. Um, but yeah, I think you ask any of us, there's lots of roles that we, like, God, I mean, there's roles that I watch that I'm like, oh, I would have wanted to sink my teeth in. Like, I think Sarah Silverman does an amazing job in, um, what's the? Wreck-It Ralph. Wreck-It Ralph. Now, she's perfect. I look at it and go, I want a job like that. Because it's juicy and it's good and funny and, you know, so we, I see things like that and I'm like, oh, that's a dream. Even if I could just like sit in a, in a room and read that script out loud with friends, I would do that. So I think we all, we all have those. Mm -hmm. Have you met your Japanese counterpart? Never, I wish, I, it's like a dream. I wish they would make, do something so that we could all meet each other. Um, I know, I think Veronica has met Ash, the Japanese actress who plays Ash, but I really, I don't know anyone else who's gotten that opportunity. Can you arrange for that? Is that something you could do? No, okay. <laughs> we can try, um, no promises. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's a bummer. I really would love to. What? Okay. Never mind. Don't. Okay. No, no, it's <laughs> fine. It's, it's a good, good question. I, I wish again. It, it's a stinky. It's a good question. A stinky answer. Uh, it would be very, very cool. Uh, and I don't think like. I, it would be cool too if like. We overlapped in a lot of different roles, but I don't think there's anyone specific that I overlap with all the time. Hmm. It's just, I think the way they work there is just different. Yeah. Which Japanese counterpart would you like to meet the most? Oh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's like picking a favorite Pokemon. Uh, um, it would be cool to meet, um, I think Anna from, from Shaman King would be fun to meet. Because that was a fun, I mean, it just would be fun, I don't know why. But that would be fun. <laughs> this is terrible answers. Guys, tell everyone that my panels are terrible. You're fine. <laughs> Yes. Going back to your uh, theater experience, what was the first theater, theater um, performances that you did? Oh, gosh. What was your first theater? Cats. <laughs> oh, seriously? I was like in fourth grade, like I was in a local theater class and we did all these songs from Cats and covered ourselves in cat makeup. Um, yeah, it was. So we did that and I, you know, I just did like school plays and stuff. And then my first professional job, when I first finally got to start doing original works, uh, there it was a show called Custody and I... Luck, I lived close enough to New York that I was going in after school every day and going to rehearsals and I am never happier than when I'm in rehearsal. So, so you know, and then I went to summer camp, I went to theater camp <laughs> and like did at least three, three musicals a summer. Uh, I'm a Sondheim junkie uh, because who isn't, who likes musicals? Uh, and yeah, I mean, that's my... Those are my roots as theater, and I think it's probably the best training. Improv and theater are probably the best training. What's the best Sondheim? Oh, wow. Well, I mean, I'm so partial in, to Into the Woods. Uh, I've done it a few times, and it's a great show. I don't know if it's the best show, but it's my favorite. Do you have a favorite? That's uh, pretty much that one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Sweeney's awesome. They're, I mean, every, they're all good. Company's good. Company's oh. great. And the, I don't know if it's on Netflix. There was a version of a live version of it on Netflix that was awesome. Mm. I think I made him angry. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyone else? Yeah, you. Um, you did a heck of a I know. No, I'm joking. I'm, I'm, Charlie, I'm glad you're here. Kidding. <laughs> um, did you get into anime after you started voice acting? Were you into it before? I was voice acting first, um, doing, again, like commercials and audiobooks. I didn't really know any, I, I, to this day, don't know how I got that first anime audition, which is so unfair. I never got to thank anybody. Um, so yes, I, my background, you know, it, it went theater, voiceover, commercials, into the anime, and then original cartoons. But there's that, learn, I mean, there's such a learning curve from doing a commercial job to doing an anime session with dubbing. So luckily, everyone was very patient with me. I don't know if you guys have ever seen a live dubbing session. Some, a lot of conventions you have, it's great. I don't know if anyone's doing a live dubbing panel, but if you ever get a chance at a convention to see one, it's so much fun. Like, you know, people from the audience can get up and, and try to do it. And it's, it's amazing to see like some people who it just comes really naturally to and some people who it doesn't. And it's, but it's just fun, I mean, to watch. Because I, 
I would have assumed it was really simple until I actually went and did it. So someone asked the other day at our panel, like, what are your favorite characters to do? And I said, the ones whose mouths are, are like off screen a lot because <laughs> then I don't have to worry about dubbing them and I can actually- Wear a mask. Yeah, the, well, it's also like a character with a mask. Like, because it gives, it does give us more freedom. You know, I was watching something old that I did the other day and I, I, was, I was, didn't love my performance and I realized it was because I was so locked into the lip flap. And that is a bummer when that happens. Even with the best writing, I think that happens. Uh, and I think fans are pretty generous about understanding that. Not always, but I think you, you guys get that we have constraints. Mm -hmm. But it is a bummer when, when you go back and watch something you're like, why did I say it like that? That doesn't make sense. Yeah. So uh, what do you think of uh, Colorado and NDK so far? Have you been here uh, before? Like Colorado? I've not been to Denver. Uh, I've been to Colorado, uh, Breckenridge. Denver's awesome. Um, I, there's like, now that I've, I did a little mini tour and I'm like, oh, I want to go back. There's like museums I want to go to. I want to go to, there's so many restaurants I want to try. I didn't see Union Station. Who's local? Oh, yeah, a lot of you. Okay. Like, I want to come back. I'm going to, I'm just going to come even if they don't invite me. Um, but it's awesome. The convention's been great. Everyone's been super nice and you guys are cool, I think. Where, where did you guys come in from? Um, well, I was born and raised in Colorado. I, I live in Golden by the Colorado Mall. Okay, so let's see who came. The, who thinks they came the farthest? <laughs> How many? Give me hours of driving. Hours of driving. Seven. Seven from where? South Dakota. Who can beat seven hours? Thirteen hours of flight. From where? Okinawa, Japan. Oh, you win. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I had thirteen hours of driving, so. Yeah, you totally won. Do you live there? Um, I was there for two years. Wow. Yeah, you could teach us a lot. You too? Did you come with him? No. Oh no, right here. Did, did you no. go with him? No. <laughs> She's like, I'm, I live two blocks away. <laughs> That's so cool. That is so cool. Um, yeah, so I, I'm sure you came far, but no. Oh, Sorry, he, buddy. He flew, Sorry. so he has the advantage. <laughs> Most transport, you need to be more. Let me switch time. So we can stop in like three or four minutes if you want to do signing and blah, blah, blah. Um, but let's do more questions if you have. Yeah. So after doing Pokemon, did you get into playing the game or watching the show? Did I get into the game? Or yeah, did you get into playing like the Pokemon game itself? Or? No, luckily I'm really terrible at games. <laughs> so, like, thank God, because I would be playing nonstop if I was any good at them. Um, I, I, yeah, I'm so bad. It's embarrassing. I'm good at pinball. That is like the limit of my video games. That's not even a video game. Pinball's hard. Oh, that's cool, I man. love it, but I like, that I, I like that I feel more in control with something like that. Um, so yeah, I didn't get into it. I mean, I got into it enough that like I could, my little cousins would think I was cool. Um, but I didn't like to watch myself on TV, so I never really watched it. Now, now I can go back and watch some of them. And, uh, again, like I said, you know, I said before, like Veronica's really freaking good. So I can watch her. I can watch certain people's performances. Uh, but no, I never got into the game. Luckily, or yeah. cards. Now I buy the cards because I bring them to conventions. But I never used to buy the cards. So now I. I do you ever do real animal voices? Like dogs <laughs> um, I once in a while I get asked to, if it's part of something. Um, there are people who are so good at that. Once in a while I'll get an audition and, and um, I have a friend, my friend Rachel is an impressionist. And if I get, like, I know my limits. So like if I get an audition, they're like, we want a real parrot sound. I'm like, Give it to Rachel. Like, I can, I can read this and make a fool of myself, or you guys can hire Rachel. You know, like, so like I did, I did something recently I'm not probably supposed to talk about where I played a cat. So once in a while I would do the or the hissing, or but I can't roll my R's, which limits some of my cat. I can't purr. They're like, can you roll, can you do the purr with the rolled R's? And I was like, no. Um, so yeah, like that is a that is a really specific skill set. I mean, I can be like, some dog barking, like once in a while, like I'll do some, you know, if it's like incidental and I'm like in a session, they're like, oh, there's a dog, can you do some yippy dog stuff? And I'm like, yeah. you know, like crap like that, that you can all do too. It's, it's, I'm not exceptional at any of this. Um, it's paycheck. What? It's paycheck. Well, yeah, and I'm there. I mean, and if it's not good, they'll find someone else to do it. I can't burp on cue very well. Sometimes I get asked to do that. If I have like Diet Coke with me, I can. So it's, there's like weird little things, skills like that, that some people are just known to do. I forgot, there's one actor here that says, he's like the stunt burper for everybody at, fun, uh, at Funimation. Like they know that he is a phenomenal burper. 
So they'll be like, oh, just get, I forgot who it was. But they're like, oh, just get him, we need a bunch of bourbon. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, everyone has their thing. Bourbon's not mine, unfortunately. I mean, it is, but not when I'm in the studio. Like, sometimes I'm like, that was phenomenal. Why didn't anyone record that? <laughs> uh, you just have like a pocket. I'm such a lady. <laughs> Um, I should always be recording. I know. ABR always be recording. So, so animal noises, things like that. There, there, like, there are people that just honestly do that for a living. They, they, they are unbelievable at it. So I don't even try to compete. Years ago, I probably would have thrown my hat in the ring. Now I know better. It's like know your limit. You know what I mean? Like it's good to know your limits and know like where your strengths lie. And I don't ever really want bad auditions or things going out because I just don't want them to exist in the universe. So I'm like, I'm not going to do that parrot audition. <laughs> Was there ever a role that you regret getting? Only when it hurt my voice. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, there, I've done a series of audiobooks, and there's voices I've established that I didn't know were going to come back. I do a character in one, uh, he's a police officer. Because in audiobooks, we do all the characters. So there's one character named Officer Borsch, and he talks like this <laughs> all the time. I was like, and when I started, 50, this book has been out, uh, we've done 15 books over 15 years, and I didn't know that he was a major character that was going to come back forever and ever. I'm like, can you kill him? It's a children's book. I'm like, can you please kill Officer Borsch? He retired and went it down and It shreds my voice. So there's decisions. I don't regret doing it. I regret the choice I made <laughs> because I didn't know, you know, like, there's a new show on, um, just started on Netflix, uh, that it's like myself, Erica Lindbeck, Robbie Damon, called Butter Snakes and Gumballs. It's for little, little kids, you guys probably. The art is gorgeous, though, so if you watch it for that, and there's a, it's a great cast. But um, that's a tough, that was a tough voice to sustain. His name is Willie, and he talks like this. But anytime there's rasp, you get a little nervous. But it's my own damn fault, so. <laughs> for doing it. I mean, I could just be like, I can't do that, but, you know. That yeah. question, I forgot it, like, right before I was oh. about to ask it. <laughs> Well, if we want to make this, like, is there anyone who does know they want me to sign something? Because I know you you had something. Yeah, let's I mean, let's go, let's see, let's do like three more minutes and then, yeah, we ask if you guys have anything else. Yeah, yeah. Is there anything you're working on now or have just finished that you'd like to go ahead and promote? Yes. Um, well, if you go to Malaysia, you can watch uh, Marvel Discourse. So I'm promoting that, just kidding. Everyone can go to Malaysia. Um, Oh yeah, Digimon Try in theaters September 15th. I'm very excited. If you know people like how what it's like to go from Pokemon to Digimon, like it felt very natural. To tonally, they're very similar, um, and it was really fun to get back in the booth and do something that's that high energy and fun. Uh, so I'm really excited to see that because I don't really know the plot other than what I recorded, and that's fun because they don't let me see the rest of the script. They clearly don't trust me. Um, <laughs> It's not you, it's in every No, episode. I know, I'm just kidding. Uh, I do have a big mouth though, but, um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm not about that stuff. Um, so yes, that, I mean, the, obviously the Yu-Gi-Oh! movie when it comes out, Father's Nights just, just dropped. That's fun to say. Yeah, it just dropped. Um, <laughs> nothing else I'm allowed to talk about. Yeah, last question. I remember the, I remember the question. What is your favorite book? Oh gosh. Um, you know, I love, when I was younger, I loved um, Bridge to Terabithia. It was always a great book. I love the book Wicked that the musical is based on. The original book is so good. Uh, those, are, those are two that have stuck with me over the years. Um, like, I remember rereading Bridge to Terabithia, like, all the time as a kid. And so I think, I mean, I think young adult writing, and you guys probably agree with this, has gotten just world's better, and there's like no shame in reading young adult books anymore, because the writing's awesome, um, and sometimes the other stuff's not, you know, they're still great books. I, I mean, I'm a big nonfiction reader, you know, obviously anything Malcolm Gladwell, or I do, I love biographies. I'm reading Judd Apatow's book now where he interviews like eight billion comedians, so it's just a bunch of essays, basically, but nonfiction for fun. So, don't work. What? Yeah. I suggest it. Okay. So, my suggestion is a book called Mistborn, that is written by a man named Brandon Sanderson. Mistborn? Mistborn, yeah. Mistborn. How yes. do you mist? Like in the mist? Yeah, like the mists. Like M-I-S-T-B-O-R-N. Mistborn. Born. Alright, one last. Let's get one more and then we'll drop this mic. Hard. Cool.
hardcore. Yeah. What do you do in overseas um, convention? Um, I did my first one in New Zealand. Uh, I'd love to do more uh, because why not? <laughs> I, and I'll be honest, I didn't realize, look again, this was 20 years ago when we started doing these shows. I didn't know they were playing in New Zealand. <laughs> it didn't, it just didn't occur to us at the time. You know, like, it, because it, we didn't have Twitter, we didn't have Facebook, we didn't have someone in New Zealand writing to us and saying, I like your show. So when I went there, I, it was also interesting to see what shows made it over there. Like, they knew Shaman came really well, uh, which I was like, that's interesting. I wonder why they picked this show to air over here and not fighting food on. Or, so I, I, I would love to have been in the room for those discussions where they were like, oh, this will play in Australia, but this one won't. You know, like, I find that interesting. Um, but yes, I'm so, I love going to as far away as I can for conventions because I love to travel. Um, but they really only want me in English speaking countries, so I have to find those conventions and try to go to those. But hopefully I'll be back in Denver because I like it. And you guys are awesome. So. Let me have you back. What did you say? And me have to come. Oh, I don't even know. See, you guys know more than I do. Well, thank you guys so much for coming. And just come hang, like, just come up here and hang out for a little while. We'll sign stuff and talk, and um, we'll make it less formal. <laughs> Thanks.